Yes, sewage. Every year we produce one million tons of it in the UK. And it produces its own waste, heat. Interest is growing in how to use this waste heat as a sustainable energy source. And here in East Anglia, it's being used in the building of a unique greenhouse project, which could revolutionize our country's farming industry. This will be the world's first greenhouse that is using heat from a water treatment plant. And that has the benefit of not only reducing the impact on the environment, but also reducing the UK's need to import produce. In the UK, we consume over 500,000 tonnes of fresh tomatoes every year. 80% of this, around 400,000 tonnes, is imported. The same goes for cucumbers and peppers. We import 75% of our cucumbers and 90% of peppers. These new greenhouses could not only help make the UK self-sufficient in produce, but also reduce carbon emissions by 75%. So Ben, we're now walking into the greenhouse. Blimey, it's really, really big. Um, certainly one of the largest in terms of the UK. For every hectare of normal land, a greenhouse like this can produce 10 times more food using 10 times less water. We'd be looking at growing probably about 23 million peppers a year wow. from this particular facility. So what is that as a percentage of the amount of consumption of peppers in the UK? I'd say probably 5%. A conventional greenhouse might use fossil fuels to provide its heat by burning gas or oil. But here the waste heat from the nearby sewage works is pumped two and a half kilometres via an enclosed loop system to the greenhouse. The idea to use this waste heat came from thermal engineer Neil Lawson. Well, it was inspiration from nature, really. Walking down the river with a dog on a winter's day, saw a stream coming in from the left and it was steaming and all the ducks were sitting on there, obviously enjoying the warmth. So I followed that stream up to its source and came up to the uh, sewage treatment works. They were discharging a thousand litres a second of uh, clean water into the river at up to 25 degrees centigrade. That equates to 54 megawatts worth of waste heat. That's enough heating for about 15,000 homes. And using geographic information system mapping, 43 sites close to wastewater centres have been identified around the country, including the Anglian Water Treatment Plant near Bury St Edmunds. So we're now at the water recycling plant where this treated water will then be pumped into a station and the heat will be removed from that process and then the heat will be transferred to the greenhouse. Um, we're taking a low source energy which is otherwise a waste energy using heat pumps to upgrade or compress that low grade heat to make it useful heat to heat a greenhouse. A greenhouse uses a lot of energy. Um, here we have an abundant source available. Another benefit to this new farming technique is reducing reliance on countries where water is no longer so abundant. Parts of southern Spain, actually, their groundwater now is saline, and they're having to develop saline-resistant crops. Whereas here in the UK, we don't have that problem. It rains all the time. We can get all the water we need from, from capturing it on the roof, recycling it, and that's not all the roof can do. And the entire roof is designed to maximise the amount of light that comes into it. And so much so that the glass is, is diffuse mm -hmm. and it enables the light to be spread evenly across the entire crop. It's going to be an extremely high-tech greenhouse. It's actually quite remarkable. It might look uh, unassuming, but actually there's a lot of artificial intelligence included in the environmental computers. All the vents are controlled by artificial intelligence. They're constantly scanning Met Office data for prevailing wind directions. The trend for computer-driven farming is growing. A six-month autonomous greenhouse competition was recently held in the Netherlands. Teams fully automated the process of growing tomatoes. Sensors, camera detection and models provided the needed information to get the plants the exact nutrients. And of course, robots play a role in greenhouse production. And here they will be deployed to help carry vegetables around the central aisle to the packhouse. There are no plans to use robots like this sweeper bot to help pick the produce, yet. But the coronavirus pandemic has highlighted the need to think about growing food locally and perhaps with limited human involvement. No one knows what the future holds, so you know, with this particular pandemic, let's say it could, the virus could mutate and all of a sudden we don't have enough food. We've benefited from you know, unrestricted movement and free movement of goods as well, and that may be set to change. If we don't have a bit more resilience in the UK on our food production, there could be issues down the line. These issues could disappear depending on the success of this project. 
If all 43 sites were up and running, low carbon farming say they could produce all of the UK's tomato requirements and at least half of its peppers. Until then, the first shipments from here are expected to hit the supermarkets next spring.